Welcome to Math 141 for uh, Winter Quarter 22, and uh, I, my name is Chuck Devangi. I'm going to be the uh, the instructor for this course, for this online uh, venture we are about to uh, to join in on. I just wanted to take a little bit of time talk about the structure of the course using WAMAP, that sort of thing. Um, so, if you'll notice, this is what your screen should look like when you log on to WAMAP. You you already have because you've accessed this recording. So uh, some of this stuff may be a little redundant for you. Um, so the structure of the course is I have every week released, and I, I usually release the weeks two weeks before the, the stuff is actually due on it. So here's the first, first three weeks, and uh, if you look, this is the student page. If you look at what I see, all the weeks are laid out where we are ready to go. Um, so looking at, looking at week one, you can see where there's the, these are lectures for the day, and here's the quizzes and forums for the week. So a couple things, intro forum, there looks like there's no quiz this week. Intro forum, you, you post on it, it tells you when things are due right there. Uh, for the, the lectures, 1.6, that tells you what chapter of the book we're looking at. Here's the lecture, it's a video of, uh, of me talking, and then here's some practice problems out of the book that I want you to do. And the, the practice problems, uh, I won't collect the homework, but it is really to your advantage to do those practice problems. Math is a uh, math is not just understanding; it's also doing. It's kind of it's the it's a performance class. So having that practice in will help you quite a bit. So looking at this day one getting started, you've I'm sure you've already looked at this because uh, you're watching this video, this course intro video right here. So here's all the stuff that I want you to uh, to get done this first week. Uh, let's take a peek then at getting things done. Let's look real quick at the course calendar. And this is something I really strongly recommend that you that you print out. Uh, so there's a couple things going on here. Intro forum, you saw that. There's an intro quiz that's due as well. And let's look at where that's at. There's that intro quiz right there. So um, as you look at this course calendar, like I said, I, I think you should really print this out. Uh, I don't often tell people what they should do, but this is one of them. Print this out so that you don't miss any deadlines. Um, the way this is laid out, 1.6, 3.2, those are the lectures and the problems out of the book. And this is the latest I think you should do it. So like 3.4, you should have it done by the 20th, or, or by the end of the 20th at least. Um, if you're doing it later than that, you're, you're a little bit behind. Things that are italicized are things that are due. So notice intro forum due, intro quiz due, form response, practice quiz one, time quiz one, etc. Uh, I've tried to lay this out so most things are due on Wednesday and Fridays. I've had to shift things a little bit because of some closures for the college. So if you look at week eight, we have some stuff due on Monday and on Wednesday that week, which is a little different than I like to do. Uh, but everything else is really predictable this Wednesday Friday cycle really print this thing out it's gonna help we have exams uh, on February 2nd March 3rd and then the final on the on the 22nd okay I'm gonna step back then uh, look back into resources again I'm gonna look at the syllabus I'm not gonna read the whole syllabus to you but I want to highlight a couple parts on it uh, that's my Wacom email I'd really prefer that you message me through WAMAP. WAMAP's open all the time on my desktop. I'll be able to answer real quick that you'll get the fastest response if you message me through WAMAP. I'll talk about how to do that in a minute. Um, prerequisites, course outcomes, you can take a look at that, what text we're using. Again, message me through WAMAP. So here is the exam schedule. This is when our tests happen. They happen on those days. Uh, please don't miss them and email me afterwards and just say I forgot. Um, take responsibility for that. Print out that calendar and, and look at it every day. Um, one thing about that calendar, this is not a self-paced course. I, there are due dates. Uh, there are things that you need to, uh, need to do by certain times on here. I do give uh, late passes, six late passes to each student. That allows you to extend a timed quiz or a practice quiz. The, the due dates on those. That, that's You can't use them on forums or on exams or the final. Um, so print that calendar. Make sure that you are, are on top of it. 
graded scale percentages to numbers. Uh, this is important. This class ends at the final. The, the final is the is final. It's the it's the last day of the course. So notice that um, all work must be submitted by 11:59 p.m. the day before the final exam. So if you're planning on using late passes, they won't extend it past the final. You have to have things done the night before the final for this class. Here's our categories. Uh, there's two exams that are 30%. The final is 35%. Uh, practice quizzes and forms are lumped together for 15%, and the time quizzes are 20% of your grade. So like I said before, the homework is not graded uh, in this class, but I really recommend that you do it. Uh, exams in the final, they are taken online. And what happens is the, the day of the test, the, the test will open up at 8 a.m. and be open until 10 p.m. Um, but what you get is you, when you, once you click start, the clock starts ticking on you and you get two hours to complete it. So it's one single two hour sitting and that's consecutive time. You can't pause it. Um, the, oh yeah, the 10 p.m. is when the test closes. So even if you, if you start the, the final at 9.30 p.m., you only have a half hour. It, it doesn't, it's not two hours from when you start in that case. That 10 p.m. is a hard deadline for any, any of these. So sometime in that window, make sure you're, you're getting it done. And I'd like to add, I strongly recommend that you submit your scratch work after completing the exam. So you can just take a picture of it and message it to me. Um, this allows me to give you some partial credit. I really prefer to be able to grade this way. If, if you don't show me your, your work on problems, I just it's like right or wrong, and you get all the points or you don't. But if you send me some scratch work, I can actually see, oh, it was just an arithmetic mistake. You know, so I'm going to give you most of the credit for it. Uh, practice quizzes and forums are 15% of the grade. Uh, for the forums, I'll have a prompt. Please respond to the prompt in your own words. Don't copy and paste from somewhere else. Um, and then I want you to respond to at least one other person's um, prompt. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, one other person's response to the prompt. So quizzes, practice quizzes are not timed. You get four tries on each question. Um, and it's just like good practice. Practice quizzes lead into time quizzes. Time quizzes happen on usually on Fridays. You have two hours to take a time quiz. Same thing, you, you start the clock, you know, and you have two hours in one sitting. You get three tries on each question on times quizzes, three attempts. Um, and these have to be done by 11.59 p.m. on the due date. A couple things about these. I just round to three decimal places if the directions don't say otherwise. That's just a good assumption, good rule of thumb in general in math classes. Also, there's an auto grader uh, that I don't rely on entirely. So um, you'll get your time quiz, you'll be done with it, and it'll be auto graded by the auto grader. I go through after the due date and I, I look at everything and make sure that the auto grader didn't make a mistake. It does not know how to deal with subtlety. So if you feel like you're shortchanged on a question or something, uh, you know, you're like, I know this is right. It could be that you're right and the auto grader just isn't recognizing what you entered. Um, let me know. Just message me. I'll take a look at it and I'll let you know. And if you're right, I'll just give you the points. It's no big deal. All right. So there's all that. What else do we have? Oh yeah, back in resources, um, typing math symbols into WAMAP. Take a look at this section. And this is how you can type um, like three slash five so it looks like three fifths or whatever. One of the things I really like about WAMAP is um, that we can type math in it. So let's say you wanted to message me with a question. Come over here to messages, uh, new message. Say so who you're gonna send it to. What's it about? And then you're like, hey, I think I had a blah, blah, blah. And then if you want to type it, um, type some math, you can click on this, add new math. Or in the top left, above, below the tilde, there's a little single, I don't know what it is, single quotation mark. You can get this. Uh, if you type in here, let's say I said uh, x plus 3, that whole thing squared, and I'm going to arrow out of it. Notice it displays it this way. And maybe it was a fraction. Maybe that was over um, y to the third. And so there it is right there. So uh, there it is right there. So um, 
that is a good way, an easy way that you can you can type those things. I'm going to check my notes real quick. I think I've covered everything. Um, use the Math Center. It's yours. Again, message me. Ask me any questions you have at any time, and I will um, I'll respond right quick. My job is to help you learn in this course. So let me do that and uh, use me as a resource. I'm looking forward to working with you.